The sacred journey starts here. Dine Pride. Good evening, everyone. Yat a she ya all ray Nelson yan shia a tropon shlondo kia ani a bushes chain tenjikine a dashichero tachine a dashinale le bish pitore a nasha a quot all the nenishlin. Good evening. Welcome to our last event of June 2021 for Dine Pride Month. It's such an honor to be here with y'all. My name is Alray Nelson. I'm your executive director for Navajo Nation Pride, the largest indigenous pride celebration in the United States. And we're really proud of that. On behalf of our board directors, I like to say thank you for joining us tonight. We welcome you as we provide you a, a unique feature event. Uh, we're actually going to hear from Ramila Cody, who is a Grammy nominated recording artist, uh, has been receiving so many different leadership awards. But this year is also Dinette Prize Natani Leadership Honoree. In addition to that, we all know Radmilla is serving as Miss Navajo Nation from 1997 to 1998. And we would like to thank her for her service. And to, we're looking forward to hearing for, from her later on tonight. But in addition to that, we're also going to share several different videos, uh, really uplifting Dine Pride's message of honoring the sacred resiliency of our indigenous matriarchs, our moms, our grandmas, our aunts, our sisters, our trans women, everyone across the United States and around Turtle Island and around the world that are joining us. Thank you so much for you know being a part of this celebration for this month. And it's the last day of Pride Month, but the way that Dine Pride has always seen it is that every single day, 365, you know, 24 hours a day, it's us to be proud of who we are, to stand together and know that we're resilient, We've come together to defeat this monster that we know is COVID-19, and we continue to be strong as one family, as one nation, as one people. So now I like to really uplift the story of, of, of uh, basically a story that was written by Sephora, but it's a story that was written a long time ago by a young woman by name by Naomi Glasses. You probably know her. She's been featured on national, local, regional media. Uh, she is definitely a TikTok celebrity. And just like our youth director, Geronimo Louie, who was also just featured in Vogue. But Naomi Glasses' story uh, has not only been featured uh, by Sephora, but also her story is one that uplifts us, uplifts the journey of our indigenous women and really recognizing their strength, uh, the beauty, within them and outside them, but also what they really bring in terms of leadership uh, for our organization. So now we wanna share a brief uh, video uplifting the story of Naomi. Thank you, Naomi, so much for your leadership and for your courage. I was born with a bilateral cleft lip and palate. My upper lip and my palate were not formed when I was born. Kids would call me names and they would just sometimes like come over to me and just tell me you're so ugly. Yat e Naomi Glasses. 
I am Native American. My Navajo clan is Yucca Fruit Strung Out on a Line clan. I grew up in Mesa, Arizona, which wasn't predominantly Native American, and at times I felt different as being not just the only Native kid, but also having a bilateral cleft lip. As I got older, it became more apparent that I was being bullied. Kids would call me names like Rhinoceros Nose, and I didn't realize that I was gonna. When I didn't feel like I belonged, my family was always there to tell me that I was loved, that I was beautiful. Skateboarding helped me definitely escape from what others said. I could just ride for hours. With skateboarding, there are no bounds to what you can or can't do. I had to go through numerous surgeries to fix my lip, but now if you look at me today, you can't tell. <laughs> the first time I went into Sephora, it definitely helped me feel confident because my scars are on my face. Makeup could put the focus on my eyes. It's about having fun, seeing how big I can make my eyeliner wing and it makes me feel all the more powerful. Regardless of what anyone says, I know that I'm beautiful. As a modern day Navajo person, we always refer to coming back to the reservation as coming home. We decided to move back and I remember being so thrilled to just live freely. Where I live on the reservation, there is no running water, no internet connection, and some people don't have electricity. My typical day starts with feeding the animals. My grandma has always told me that if I take care of them, they'll take care of me. The sheep, they provide me my wool for my weaving. From that, I make rugs and I also make purses I really have a deep admiration for rug weaving because it's something that's been in my family for seven generations. My favorite Navajo saying is Aho Ego Dea. It means life is what you make it. Regardless of any struggles that we face as Navajo people, we are all empowered, we are creative, and we are strong. Thank you so much for to Sephora, but also to Naomi uh, Glasses for her story and just her courage and really uplifting uh, her journey to inspire the next generation of young people. And so please make sure you follow Naomi Glasses on TikTok, on Instagram, and do a shout out to her. But Danette Pride definitely supports young women uh, with her strength and her leadership. So now I actually want to just share with you all as part of this closing ceremony to close out Pride Month for our country, uh, an amazing uh, welcome message from the President of the United States and the First Lady, uh, Joe Biden and Dr. Jill Biden. Everyone, we wanna wish you a happy Pride Month and let you know how proud we are to stand with you this month and every month. For the LGBTQ community, for our nation and for the world, Pride Month represents so very much. It stands for defiance in the face of injustice, the legacy of Stonewall, and the fight to ensure that all people be treated with dignity and respect. It's a fight that resonates this year on the 40th anniversary of the HIV AIDS crisis and the fifth anniversary of the deadly attack at the Pulse nightclub in Orlando. Pride stands for courage, courage of all those in generations gone by and today who proudly live their truth. It stands for justice, as June marks the anniversary of the Supreme Court decision delivering marriage equality and protecting LGBTQ employees from discrimination. 
And above all else, Pride Month stands for love. Make no mistake, we still have a lot of work to do to ensure that everyone enjoys the full promise of equity, dignity, and protection. And that's especially true for trans people and for LGBTQ people of color. But we're making progress in executive orders and federal laws and, and, and representation and in hearts and minds. The administ this administration, our administration, is always going to have your back. And we're going to fight to pass the Equality Act and build a better LGBTQ life for young people. Thank you for being you. And we hope you have a bright and joyful pride. God bless you. God bless you all. Thank you so much, President Biden, to First Lady, Dr. Jill Biden, for just being champions and advocates for the LGBTQI community. Um, you know that they also uh, appointed our this year's Pride champion. We have two of them, uh, Arizona State Senator Jack Jackson Jr. But we also chose uh, Secretary of the Interior, Deborah Holland, uh, as our other Pride champion for 2021. So we'd like to say thank you so much to President Biden and to Dr. Joe Biden, our, our amazing First Lady, a fabulous First Lady, uh, for their leadership on behalf of the community and being there as allies and as advocates. So now I'd like to bring in another voice into this conversation. Uh, I want to just say hello to my brother, Raphael, uh, who has done great work over the last uh, four and a half years, uh, serving as the art director, the creative director, many different titles, overseeing the creative direction of Navajo Nation Pride. And uh, really glad to call my brother. And he's going to just share with you uh, a glimpse of what to expect for the launch of our our second expose exhibit of Indigenous Pride, our, our art showcase. So, hey, Raphael, good to see you, brother. Hi, Alway. Thanks for having me. And yad e she Raphael bige yin a she anad yin a shle kithle chit ni bas chin taban dus a che she in dus a nella se a hot sunet na she auto. I was born in Hunters Point, Arizona. Sinis chi. And just want to say welcome. Thank you, everyone who came out to our Pride event, um, in-person event for the parade closing ceremony, as well as the Pride showcase featuring amazing entertainers, as well as some amazing speeches and reflections from the community. It was really a day of celebration and one that will live on in my um, memory and my heart uh, forever. And I'm definitely humbled and thankful to be a part of this organization and to provide a platform for um, Two-Spirit LGBTQ plus voices, not only that of my own, that of my colleagues and those who I believe in, who I um, like to uh, align myself with as friends, and again, as colleagues, as coworkers, as team members. So with that, uh, this past year, uh, with respect to COVID-19 and the pandemic, um, I myself, as well as other artists have had the challenge of trying to find time and space and energy and inspiration to create and communicate with the world when in fact the world was communicating with itself and discussing issues of social injustices, uh, the recent histories of um, boarding schools within um, North America, specifically in Canada and as we move forward within the United States. I myself attended boarding school um, in grade school um, definitely a different um, type of atmosphere. But it is those types of conversations that I believe um, fellow creatives come to the forefront of uh, making sense of the world and interpreting it so that we may understand, reflect, and uh, through mutual and collaborative understanding move forward as a people. And that is what brought me to my role within the organization. I thought that I could activate and utilize my creativity, um, my thinking, and my intent to bring a creative and collaborative voice to Diné Pride, but more importantly, to advocate along the artists who identify as Two-Spirit LGBTQ+, or as allies, and those specifically choosing to represent and showcase the pride within the Navajo Nation of being Diné. And so with that, uh, we are pleased to announce the 2021 Indigenous Art Showcase. Uh, this year it's virtual with respect to COVID, and our matriarchs. It is the a virtual exhibit celebrating the Two-Spirit LGBTQ plus artists who have submitted and responded to the call for art we had earlier this month. 
and with that, I believe their work to celebrate the beauty, balance, and, and being within our livelihoods and our everyday existence. And with respect to that, I wanted to go ahead and share um, our launch of our website here. So if you just give me a second here, a moment. And fabulous. All right. So with that, again, um, we are pleased to announce that Joe and our matriarchs are in our virtual indigenous art showcase uh, hosted by Danae Pride. You can visit this website alongside of us or just watch here with the video. Again, that's NavalNationPride.com. So moving down to showcase the actual um, website here, Hajo and our matriarchs again, um, is an opportunity to showcase the talent and the immense creativity and voices of Two-Spirit LGBTQ plus artists. Um, I'm pleased to announce and, and share with you that all artists who had submitted work this year do identify as Dene and come from the different parts of the reservation as well as off. And I'm very thankful to those who, and respect those who have responded to the call, especially in a time when creating art and showcasing your talent and speaking to these things comes with a lot of um, weight, consideration and reflection. But again, to those who have answered the call and to share space and stories with us, I'm definitely appreciative of that. So with that, I'd like to share the exhibition statement. It is our intent to provide an inclusive space to support and activate the aesthetic and politic in both arts and life. Diné Pride 2021 acknowledges the lifelong work of our Navajo matriarchs and the indigenous women who uplift our sovereign nations. We are sacred together. So as we move forward down into the actual websites here, we'd like to acknowledge and thank and showcase the artists, Clint Holtzoy, Darby, Raymond Overstreet, Deidre Lee, Evan Benali Atwood, Jackie Hustein, Khaled Honey, Lindell Curley, and Schneider Taibuge. So the cool, great thing about this website is that, and this virtual art showcase will be up for the duration of the year. So feel free to share and promote the, the work of these artists here. So just to get started here, we'll go ahead and go through each one. Again, the first is Clint Holtzoy, and this piece is entitled, Grandma Was Born Under a Pine Tree, and like both, we will grow and thrive. Uh, this is oil on canvas, and this particular painting struck me with the um, rainbow, both looking as tears, but also as an inverted halo. Um, we're familiar with uh, Clint's work as they provided um, pieces in the past within our last showcase, um, Sacred Together, which was our first in, uh, virtual showcase, so we're happy to host their work here today with us. Moving forward, we have the amazing Darby Raymond Overstreet, with Indigenous Pride, a digital composition on watercolors. Uh, I actually have here her little artwork as a pin that you can purchase on her website and support her work. Uh, her and her partner advocates for um, not necessarily just pride, but the overall sacredness of our identities with respect to process and, and reflection found within craft and within expression that we find within our cultural arts. Moving forward, uh, we have the pleasure of showcasing Jackie Ahostein in a cake that she created entitled Straight in Your Turquoise. Uh, Jackie Ahostein is the founder and owner of I Need Sugar, which is um, based in the east side of Gallup, New Mexico. Uh, she is a, um, the mother of a good friend of mine, Rhiannon Ahostein, who has been a great ally, of, uh, friend and ally of mine. And to see them showcase their interests, their talents, and their creativity and share it with the community on behalf of the aesthetics, as well as the history and the understanding of what these images and uh, symbols uh, mean as far as value, as far as the representation of um, feminine energy and identity represented here. Moving forward, we have Kesh Jet Navajo Shoe Game by Schneider Taibi Gay. Um, from what I recall, um, Schneider is a student at Fort Lewis College in Durango, Colorado, and he created a pewter meta, um, a shoe game uh, little model here out of various materials. Uh, moving forward here, uh, we have the amazing Evan Benali Atwood with um, film stills, I'm sorry, 35 millimeter stills of Good Thoughts by the Creek. Um, I, I was struck by his work and know of his I'm sorry, their work um, from Instagram and through a great circle of friends of mine. 
and the overall intent and understanding and appreciation and respect brought into the visuals of what Evan does is um, commendable. It is inspiring and it is also um, a steps forward. And I would uh, encourage you and all of you on the line to check out their work. And we have other pieces featured within this show as well. Moving forward, uh, this is by Colin Honey, a painting titled All Stars Are Closer. Uh, it's been interesting to see how Indigenous artists have aligned themselves with this Indigenous futurism of space, of other Indigenous peoples uh, that could be creatures, aliens, but to also see how um, this sense of community and overall resilience play a vital role within our everyday lives in real life, right? But also within the work of others and those who choose to share it with us. Again, this is Evan Benali Atwood with another feature from Good Thoughts by the Creek. And this particular series, from my understanding, is a representation, but also a celebration and, and advocacy of Indigenous female identity, female identifying identity, um, Indigenous feminism. This idea that uh, we as Indigenous peoples are stewards of the land of culture, of language, or the understanding and history. In a similar way, the matriarch within our own society and our lives has been a steward and a overarching support for who we are today. And I thought this was a wonderful piece to include in the show, but also how well it represents and fits with the theme of Pajon and our matriarchs. Moving forward, uh, I'm pleased to share and showcase the work of Dietra Lee. Uh, she's based in Navajo, New Mexico. She's a great friend of mine and very talented. Friendship aside, she's very talented and this piece is untitled. However, it does feature a hummingbird here with the rainbow colors. Um, I have the pleasure of knowing her, um, and, her and her partner, her soon to be wife. <laughs> I don't know if I can share that, but um, and just the bravery that she has within her creativity and within her identity and her spirit and how she chooses to share that with the world, whether that be with body art via tattoos, um, t-shirts, paintings, drawings. Um, ever since I've known her, her creativity has always been at the forefront of her identity, her existence. And I'm very lucky to know her and I'm happy to share her work with you today. Moving forward, this is another shot of the cake Straighten Your Turquoise by Jackie Hosting with I Need Sugar. Um, if you notice at the bottom, there is Monument Valley. Leading up into that, we have Navajo basket, squash blossoms, some corn, uh, hummingbirds, some other flowers, as well as turquoise. Um, similar to the Deidre's painting, um, the idea of a hummingbird being of a blessing, being this fleeting moment of, of, of hope, of positivity, of this uh, magical moment that uh, you have the off chance of catching in your backyard, but also knowing that this is within your home as well as the um, plantations of corn and fields and how you can utilize that to bring sustenance and self-sustainability, not only to yourself, but your family, but your community. As we move forward into the future, I believe this is going to be a common theme. Um, I mean, it already is, but more so within everyday discussions. Um, and at the dinner table, as it were. Next spot, we have a Pride Choker by Lindell Curley. Um, again, this is about 18 by 24 inches. Um, Lindell submitted other pieces, and I thought this was the strongest of them and fit well with the theme, um, with, re with all due respect. But I just wanted to point out that, again, as El Ray, our executive director, had mentioned earlier, Pride is not just one month, it is every day. It is how we adorn ourselves, similar to the um, fondant uh, attributes earlier with Jackie's cake, you know, the turquoise and how we identify ourselves. Um, it goes a long way when you see a rainbow or just even the pride colors, the progressive colors, trans colors, non-binary colors, on flags, on t-shirts, on your jewelry, on your notebook. Um, I believe it, it's a sign of hope, it's a sign of adornment, it's a sign of identifying. And it's such a, um, a little, it's a little punk. And I thought, um, you know, we have reclaimed the word queer within recent history. It is now more of a political stance rather than a derogatory one that we 
well, I myself was defined as growing up, but to see how meaning, um, aesthetics and politics continues to change and evolve, this is the, the importance of discussion. This is the importance of why we are on this call today. And so thank you for um, joining us today. Moving forward, we have another piece by Evan Benali Atwood uh, featuring the mother here, a uh, portrait of her within the land. And again, this relationship that we have to our surroundings is very vital to who we are as Diné individuals. With respect to spreading positivity, love with every creation, to quote Gaga, right? Um, I believe to have respect for their, our matriarchs in a time with such um, immense heteropatriarchy within um, systemic institutions and locations and, and, and atmospheres within our lives to Pride should be a place to showcase that, to embrace that, to really advocate for the teachings and as well as the understandings and the perseverance that comes from that. And I'm happy to share that with um, Evan's work here. Moving forward, we have another piece by Khaled Honey, a uh, photograph entitled Enigma. Um, I myself had short hair, right? I had no hair for about 10 years and recently just started growing it. Um, it's been about two years now, um, but with respect to that, the freedom and the power and the confidence that your hair allows you uh, is something that I've missed. And I believe this photograph represents that. You know, you are as free as your hair and our knowledge and our memories are contained within it. And it's a representation of our life and it's an extension of our being. And I just thought this was a beautiful celebration of that aspect of who we are as Diné. Uh, moving forward, we have another piece by Schneider Tybee Gate entitled The String's Tail. Uh, this is very unique with the polyester plaster hands, right? And the black thread creating a Navajo weaving or um, rug using the string game. And I'd just like to remind you that these everyday practices, these everyday things that we take for granted or tend to overlook have value, cultural value, not only that, but value to your childhood and your memory and where you come from with respect to what was handed down to you, taught to you and shared with you as a child, whether that came from your mother, your aunts, your grandma, or just even your community, I believe there is, again, going back to a stewardship within creativity as we as artists allow ourselves. Um, and with that intent, we're able to create space for conversations, for celebrations, for reflection. And I'm very happy that the artists here today, showcase today, were able to do that and provide that with us. And so again, this particular website, again, Hojo and Our Matriarchs is available for viewing. Please share, um, promote these artists and their amazing work who responded to this call during this time. And I just wanted to say, again, thank you very much. And with that, we appreciate your support. We appreciate your, your ongoing interest and advocacy alongside of us as we move forward into the future. Again, Pride is not just one month, it is every day. And as we mark June 20th, 30th, we move on to the future. And I just want to say thank you to everyone again, again, and also to the artists, as well as the Met Pride and the organization, as well as our, our community that we choose to support. With that, back to you, Alray. Thank you. Hey, thank you so much, uh, Brother Raphael, for that amazing uh, introduction to uh, our Indigenous Art Showcase for 2021. Uh, you know, I'm looking forward to the future and what this art showcase can look like in person going into 2022. Uh, but thank you so much, Raphael, for your leadership. Uh, and thank you so much for organizing and making sure that uh, this year's virtual event was successful. Thank you much, so much, brother. Thank you. Okay, so anyone, so everyone that's watching right now, uh, I just want to share with you that this is, comes down to game time in terms of, actually tonight the Phoenix Suns are playing against the Los Angeles Clippers. Uh, and so I'm trying to make sure that we get through this so y'all can go watch that basketball game, especially rooting for uh, wh whatever team, whether it's Los Angeles Clippers or uh, the Phoenix Suns, who's my personal favorite. Uh, but no, I just want to share with you that uh, we actually are joined by this year's uh, Dine Pride Natani Leadership Honoree. We all know who she is. Uh, doesn't necessarily need an introduction because when she walks into a room, uh, you know, we all know who she is. She blesses us with her presence. She blesses us with her strength, her resiliency. 
Um, but before I actually turn it over to this amazing aunt, Ani Honoree, I just like to acknowledge our Diné Pride uh, champion, Secretary of the Interior, Deborah Holland. Uh, our other not Ani honorees, Dr. Andy Nez, who's also the former uh, co-founder of Diné Pride. Uh, also to uh, pre former Navajo Nation president, Dr. Joe Shirley Jr. Uh, and in addition to that, Council Delegate Nathaniel Brown. And our fourth member that could not be there physically with us uh, during our closing ceremony in front of the Navajo Nation Council Chamber, which was our only in-person event this year. And thank you to everyone that followed uh, COVID-19 safety protocols and joined us in front of the Navajo Nation Capitol. Uh, but I also wanna just say thank you so much to um, all the leadership that have had our backs, that have been there behind us, Rather, that's Navajo Nation uh, Council Speaker Seth Damon and all the members of the 24th Navajo Nation Council for your leadership. So now let's all hear it for uh, my sister, my Shede, uh, my oldest sister. And, uh, you know, she's a former Miss Navajo Nation for 1997, 1998. And I always remember when she came, when I was actually in middle school, uh, she came and sang the flag song as Miss Navajo Nation in 1997. So I gave away my age. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it was amazing and powerful to hear that. But also, she actually sang this song called Hero. Uh, I believe it was from Mariah Carey. And uh, I, would, I, felt, I felt so awestricken um, by this amazing young woman. And I was like, I want to be like her. Uh, but in addition to that, like also like the amount of work that she's done for the Navajo people, rather it's recently, you know, uplifting the voices of our grandmas and our elderly uh, with COVID relief but also dealing with the fact that, uh, you know, she's gone through a journey up and down to really uh, show us what Anatani really is. And so with the compassion, the leadership, uh, you know, the resiliency, her beautiful words, that, you know, the, the songs that she shares with our people and her prayers, uh, she's a perfect example of what Anatani Diné Pride Honoree should be. So let's all hear it from our sister now, um, the amazing and fabulous Rod Milla Cody. Hey, Rod Milla. Pride not any honorary, holy a geisha like Edotha. A hand saga to the Pride Board of Directors for the re, for this recognition as one of this year's Pride not any honorary recipients. I am honored and appreciate this acknowledgement alongside relatives who are also recipients of this award Dr. Andy Nez, Council Delegate Nate Brown, and Navajo Nation President Joe Shirley. As an accomplice to the LGBTQ2 plus community, I can think of many, many fierce relatives who should be receiving this award and acknowledgement for the tireless work they have done and continue to do within the LGBTQ2 plus community and beyond. Shanelle Mary Jim was the Pride Not Ani Honoree in 2019 and will be accepting this award on my behalf. I would like to take this moment and acknowledge some of our trans sisters and relatives who smash patriarchy every day and contribute greatly to the health, safety, support, healing, and justice for the LGBTQ2 plus community and land. To Maddie Jim, Stella Martin, and Chaz So for this beautiful list of relatives, I share this recognition with you all. Stella Martin, Kay Livingston, Viviana DeCello, Sasha James, Renee Gray, Trudy Jackson, Ojoni Tolino, Celeste Hummingbird, Tamara Torres, Kendra Tennyson, Camille Livingston, Nicola Vigil, J. Miestis, B. Otelli, Chaz So, Lena Mariano, Lynn Curley, Honey Sunday, 
Espen Lee, Karen West, Tasha Smith, Kay Bahi, Alexis Casus, Misha Owens, Nikki Mace, Kate Jackson, Alexandria Teria, Anna Julian, Bailey Sloan Redhouse, Florinda Kopi, Michelle Cadman, Lori Smith, UA Begay, Jessica Fox, V. Arlano, Marcy Angelis, Lynn Curley. Our trans sisters and relatives who have returned to the House of Dawn. Raven Livingston, Tree Low, Natalie Reyes, Summer Bahi, Tanya James, Stephanie Yellowhair, Amy Martinez, Melina Sala, Serena Lee, Drew Sage, Jana Robinson, V Saltwater, Rathi McKee, Jade Platero, F Martinez, Paris Begay, Tasha Johnson, Julie, Kaylee Watson, Candice Bahi, and Casey Thomas. Each and every trans relative that I just named should inspire us to continue to be more than an ally and be an accomplice. There are laws now preventing our LGBTQ plus relatives from living healthy and dignified lives. An ally abides by the laws while an accomplice smashes them. Be an accomplice and directly act against laws that continue to displace and disempower our LGBTQ relatives. A concrete example today is the Same-Sex Marriage Act that continues to fail within our Navajo Nation Council. On October 18, 2014, I had the honor of officiating a wedding of two beautiful gay relatives, Edison Brown Brozier and Paul Brozier. I witnessed so much love, joy, happiness, and liberation in that moment and union. As Dene, we might view ourselves as a progressive society, but what does it mean when the historically conservative states of Arizona, Idaho, and others recognize and allow same-sex marriages, yet the Navajo Nation prohibits and does not recognize same-sex marriages? Continue to speak out in solidarity with our LGBTQ plus relatives within our families and communities. As an accomplice, I will always support and stand in solidarity with you in the fight to live a just, free, and dignified life. No award is needed to be a good relative. As Dene and as an accomplice, it's a given to stand with relatives who continue to be oppressed simply because we're in this fight together. Eh does not discriminate. Do eh. Happy Pride. Happy Pride, Ronmilla. Thank you so much for, uh, you know, just joining us and sharing such an inspirational and amazing video about what it means to be a Natani and a leader for our people. Um, and I just want to let everyone know that now we're going to transition to a component where we're actually going to show you in more detail the amazing artwork. And in the background, you actually will hear a beautiful song. Uh, it was a music video that was done in 19. I believe it was actually done in 2013 uh, by Rod Milla. And, uh, you know, I think it was her niece uh, that was a part of that video, but it was done uh, with her uh, recording a song called A Beautiful Dawn. And so as we play this song in the background, we're actually going to show with you over four minutes uh, the amazing, beautiful artwork that really uplifts our theme this year, Hajon and the resiliency of our matriarchs. Yane yanga ne jone ko uwo hail ka ye ne jone ko uwo hail ka ye 
Thank you so much for that, Radmila, uh, sister, for uh, you know sharing uh, your beautiful voice, but also to all the artisans that were uh, gathered uh, over the last month and submitted um, some amazing, beautiful artwork to Diné Pride. And many of you actually auction off your artwork uh, in the name of Diné Pride to ensure that we raise money for our LGBTQ scholarship. So I'd like to say thank you so much, especially to my sister, uh, you know, Jacqueline Austin, uh, who made that three-tier cake. Uh, I can only imagine how much that costs, but we actually raffled it off during our closing ceremony in Window Rock at our in-person event in front of the council chamber last Saturday. Uh, and so I want to say thank you so much to uh, Jacqueline Austin, and please visit uh, her business on Broad um, Broadway. Broadman Street, actually in Gallup, uh, right across McDonald's in a plaza called I Need Sugar. So definitely go see her, but she also has an amazing website. Uh, and so definitely uplift um, this indigenous Navajo Dene woman uh, in her bakery. Uh, as we can close, as we actually go in conclusion of this evening, uh, now we'd like to just uplift the voice of uh, two other people. We're actually gonna share with you a video that's gonna be coming from uh, you know, it was a, it was part of a documentary called Mr. Navajo, 
Um, he was a part of our event during our closing ceremony, provided our opening prayer, opening song to really just really provide us a foundation for Navajo Nation Pride 2021 for our in-person event in front of the Navajo Nation Council Chambers. So you're definitely going to hear the story of the amazing and fabulous Zachariah George. But after him, we're actually going to play an amazing video from Maluna Native on MAG7 and, and these amazing artists that actually provided a video called We Are One. Uh, please definitely download their video. They're on iTunes, on Spotify. Uh, and thank you so much uh, to them and their voices and really uplifting uh, the Native uh, communities all across Turtle Island. That includes Canada, United States of America, and also the colonial borders of Mexico going to Central and to South America. Uh, other than that, uh, let's go ahead and hear from uh, this story from amazing Zachariah George. My hair. I have to have mirrors everywhere. I'd rather show up late than being ugly. Remember that. You guys can say good morning to and wave to him. You don't have to be shy or anything. Just be yourselves and have fun. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Yes, a hey, good morning, everyone. How are you guys doing this morning? Good? Are you guys doing good this morning? So, so remember, don't pass that line, okay? On each side, you're going to stay all the way down. See ya? Aww, good morning. Good morning, good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Mr. Navo is the guy who really advocates to keep his culture alive, to keep his language alive, to keep his native people going. Not just his generation, but the generation before him and the generation after him. So now we will get to a young gentleman, which we call Zachariah George, from the Dine Nation. Good evening, everyone. My name is Zachariah George. I'm also known as Mr. Navajo. And yes, it was my pants that was all over Facebook, but it's OK. I take very good, I take very deep pride in my pants because a long time ago, our elderlies once wore their outfits like this when they did not have no clothes. So these are um, pants that were handmade by my grandmother and my shirt as well. So um, I will sing a song, and then I'll tell a little bit more about myself, and then we'll go from there. Biga? Smells so good. I collect celebrity like name brand perfumes. So I have Nicki Minaj, Katy Perry's um, perfume Killer Queen, Britney Spears Believe. Oh, Lady Gaga, Black Bling. Her perfume smells so good. Kim Kardashian's her very, very first perfume, by the way. And um, I never use use Rihanna's. It stinks. It's too spicy. Guys' perfumes are not attractive. They stink in general. Well, I think they do.
Why would I want to shoot me? <laughs> okay, well, I think I'm gonna watch CNN for a while. See, Carol Costello, she's like the best news anchor ever. We are the Towering House Clan, born for the Mountain Cove Clan, and our paternal grandparents are the Red House Clan, and our maternal grandparents are the Ritawada Clan. I'm the oldest in the family, and I have two siblings. My grandparents raised us. We have my grandmother who raised, that's the one who raised me, Sadie George, and I, I live with her. And then this is where we live at, so we could come on in. This is the big mansion. My grandpa made this. And then my, my winning trophies right there. I'm on them for solo singing, actually. There's mostly first and second place on there. It was very nice to grow up here. I love the privateness and the open space. Living on a reservation does have its struggles. We have rough roads. We have dirt. We don't have highways. FedEx won't come all the way out here. <laughs> and um, running water hasn't come our way yet. I've actually made it on a lot of front pages of newspaper. This was one of my first newspaper that my grandparents and I have been at. About my grandparents raising me and how I got successful. I did that when I was 18 years old. It's a talented and bilingual. I had long hair right there, if you can see it. And then, I'm trying to find a good photo. I love selfies. This one is a good one. It's when I was in Albuquerque at my auntie's house. Look at my phone was bedazzled. I have a good cool phone. Zach stays over there with his grandparents. His grandparents provide a room for him, and he lives with grandma and grandpa on that side. And when he needs something or to eat something, he comes over here. We don't just push him away, so he's still a part of us. I got pregnant at the age of 19, and then as we had Zach, he started growing up, growing up, and then he started curling his hair and stuff like that, and then he would say, I wish I had a sister, and I'd tell him, too bad, you're a boy. He would take my hair ties and stuff like that, and then I started saying, don't act like a girl, don't act. That's why he cut his hair. He sees it out there going on all over the world, and he thinks that he can be part of it, but for our tradition, it's like a no-no. It's a, it's a no-no. <laughs> Oh, my beanie's on. That was like, it feels so awkward. Okay, I'm sorry about that. You guys have to cheer on these beautiful young women. as Ms. T. Navajo is kinship. Kinship is the foundation and the heart of the Diné people. It is what makes us special and unique. Being Navajo, we have kinship. We're born into kinship, and there shouldn't be a day that we go without it. Are you excited?
me here when it's been that long. No, I don't think you could see it even in that color. It's horrible, it's not gonna fit. For some reason it doesn't seem like it's, oh, that's what I'm missing. It says knuckle. This one word is very powerful and it identifies me and maybe other people. There you are. Look at your feathers flying everywhere. Not glad is like you're saying a changing person. And you're not just one person, but you're like four different types of people all in one. Which is why I said some days I feel like Mr. Navajo and some days I feel like Zachariah. You're okay. A lot of people already still mistaken me as a girl. I, just, I don't even like do nothing, like literally. And when I had like long hair and everything like that, they still thought I was a girl, but obviously I was like, no, I'm a guy, but some people just never believed me. and. I was like, well, I guess I'm just blessed that way, so. Traditional believers, when they see a gay a person, when they know that that person is gay, they feel very blessed and they're very welcoming to them because they know that they are a blessing. <laughs> It's in the family. It's in the Oh my God, I'm, just, I'm really getting emotional, so I don't want to really explain myself, but... Um, and they said that... And, you know, my mom may be that kind of a person, but they think that you should never judge a person by their sexual orientation or who they are or how they look. You should definitely accept everybody for who and how they are born and how they are raised. If you have a gay person in your life that's in your family, that your, your family will never ever fall apart regardless. Ever since Christianity had came into our lives, it really, really changed a lot of, not just Native Americans, but a lot of different people's life. That's just sad that it did, you know what I mean? On behalf of our LGBTQIA and Two-Spirit relatives from all across the United States, I'd like to say thank you, Nikiha, for joining us tonight for our official virtual event for Diné Pride Week. On behalf of our board of directors, I'd like to say Nikiha and thank you, and to also congratulate our amazing Diné Pride champions, our Nats'ani leadership honorees, and our two young Nats'ilid Pride scholars. 
As we look into the future as one people, as one nation, we are reminded of the resiliency of our communities, the strength of our grandmas, our moms, our sisters, our aunties. And we look into our theme of honoring the indigenous matriarchs all across Indian country. We also send our love and appreciation to members of the 24th Navajo Nation Council, to Honorable Speaker Seth Damon, and to many other Diné and tribal leaders that have always been here for our organization over countless many years. We are one nation. We are one people. We are sacred. Y'all have a good night. Hogonet. Until we pull ourselves up Cause we all one fam Change. From the rest to the block To the prairie to the rock We connect that love Change. Cause the people with power Feel the power of the people When we stand as one I got you stuck off the realness We be indigenous You heard of us Max have been the murderer Spreading the love with the water And earth in the stand against Ain't gotta know what the purpose is We vibe The climate is changing The signs of the times It's time to start praying Pray For the world and community Prayers are more powerful When we're in what unity Day. Hungry for a change, new path to take Can't stay the same, it's been too long Pointing out who's right or wrong Can you hear me out? All we need is a little bit of love Take time to heal and it starts with us Hand in hand, I put my trust In one world, reunite, it's a must Hold on to hope, we can overload We can break the code with a single note Sing out for the world to hear That our time is now, no more for tears I looked into my son's eyes A new day in a new life Lift the bell in dwell so peaceful Come together one world, one peace We got beautiful differences, let me give you a peek Over 500 tribes, but we all unique And if we cannot compete to eat, nothing could beat us Jealousy is more dangerous than diabetes See this unity? Imagine what it looked like You would think we would do whatever it took, right? I would do anything for this good life We could do anything if we unite Come on. You're made of you are my savior So you pray for our inspiration From the block to your reservation Any color, all my relations From the basement, worldwide invasion Every day we're painting our faces Fighting back by learning our language Dancing our dances, saying our prayers
Cause the people with power for the power of the people when we stand as one. one.